Now it seems the number of front-end frameworks keeps growing. Now Webpack is great at organizing and bundling these frameworks. In this section, we're going to hook up React, EJS, SAS, and other frameworks to show how they interact with Webpack and how Webpack can be used with anything you choose to make a better JavaScript developer experience. Now this section is a little unlike the last section because we're going to start from a common place in each of these classes. The common place is where we left off in the development section. In our terminal, let's git clone this GitHub repository. This is under my personal account and it contains all the code for this course. All right, as you can see, we're on branch master. We're going to want to check out branch hookup. Now, hookup is just the end of the development course. So if you want to start from where we left off in development, feel free to do that as well. This is just a fail safe. All right, the final thing we need to do is npm install to get all the latest packages. Okay, so in this episode, we're going to install React. And we're going to do so in a very particular way. We want React to be the basis of our app but we don't want to give up any of the hot reloading development goodness that we built in the development section. So let's start doing a simple proof of concept, hooking up React, and let's end making sure that the React state is kept in sync even as we hot reload. To get started, let's install React and React DOM. Let's open that up in a code editor. So we see our familiar code from last section. Let's create a file that will be the basis of our React app. We'll create it in source and call it app.js. Let's require Babel register. If you recall, this is the same file that we used on the server side to get ES6 imports working. And that's what we're going to do right here. Let's also require the app file we just created. All right, now in our index.html, let's add a new div. We're going to call it React Root. Normally, I don't like using IDs, but in this case, it indicates that there will only be one root. Now in app.js, let's put some boilerplate in that we'd use with any React component. We're going to import React. We're going to import React DOM. Now we're going to use React DOM, and it gives us a render function. That function takes two arguments. First is something that looks like HTML. We're going to say hello from React. The second argument is just some vanilla JavaScript. This piece of JavaScript is going to pull the DOM node that we need to inject our React into. All right, so let's run our development server and see where we're at. All right, we have an unexpected token error. This starts right on the HTML. So as is the case with other errors of this type, we're going to need to update our Babel RC to make sure that Webpack understands this new syntax. So in Babel RC, let's add a new preset. We're going to do so right underneath the env preset. This preset is called Babel Preset React. And this is going to allow us to read the JSX. Now we see Nodemon has recompiled our code. And it couldn't find the preset, which means we have to install it. So let's npm install Babel Preset React. All right, cool. Let's rerun our server. Seems to be compiling successfully. What is Babel actually doing to our app.js file? Well, let's run Babel source app.js. Here's the output. You can see that Babel has translated our ES6 imports into ES5 node style requires. But down here is where it gets interesting. We no longer see any of this syntax that looks like HTML. Now this is JSX. JSX is a syntax that Babel can compile down to plain JavaScript functions. 
In this case, it compiles it to the create element function. The first argument is what kind of element we want. The second is what attributes are on that element. And the third is the contents of that element. And then we see the plain JavaScript to tell it where to inject the JavaScript into. Let's update this a little bit. Let's give it a class name of test. And let's rerun this to see what happens. Now you can see the second argument has changed. It's no longer null, it's now class name test. So any attributes we put on this element will appear in the second argument. All right, so that's JSX in a nutshell. Let's rerun our development server and open it in our browser. And there we go, hello from React. So if we open up our console, I have a Chrome extension that allows for React debugging. You can inspect any React component and it pulls in the props. In this case, the only props we have are children, hello from React. It also tells us that we have a class name property, the value test. I find this Chrome extension pretty useful when dealing with complex React apps. So Google Chrome extension React, and you'll find it at the top. It's definitely worth adding to your browser if you plan on working in React. Okay, so that's well and good. We've added a little bit of JSX. We've rendered it to the page. If we go back to our CSS, we can see that hot reloading still works. We can see that it reloads when we update the JSX. Not bad. But a component isn't just static JSX. A true component has a state. I'd like to show how we can use the React Hot Loader library to make sure we maintain state even as we're hot reloading our components. And that's what we're going to get into in the next episode.